Okay, thank you for joining us here on the Overly Critical Photography Podcast, where we are never happy with even a single photo that we take. I'm your host, Overly Critical Charlie, and uh, here I'm going to share some criticisms and really tear down your life's work and... uh, and everything that it means to you. <laughs> uh, no, we're not going to do that. L- luckily, this is not the uh, the overly critical photography podcast. And my name isn't Charlie. My name is your photographer, Jared Poirier. And uh, yeah, even though we're not going to try to be overly critical today, uh, this is going to be a slightly critical episode, I suppose, of the show. Uh, We are going to, you know, look at uh, some of the photos that we've been taking out there on the in the field, you know, uh, on our photo shoots, and really wonder how we can make those photos better. And uh, I want to call this episode Stop Taking Boring Photos, because, uh, you know, I've taken some boring photos in my life. I think everybody who's a photographer sometimes looks at their photos and uh, and thinks they're a little bit boring. And there are, luckily, quite a few things that you can do to fix that and to start taking more dynamic, more exciting photos, uh, yeah, that are going to be a little bit more eye-catching and... Uh, get people's attention a little bit more. And yeah, I just think it's important to shake yourself out of, uh, you know, the the shell, I suppose, of uh, taking the same boring photos over and over again. But before we get into any of that, I just want to thank our sponsor, which is, of course, CloudSpot, the easiest way for photographers to deliver and sell their photos online. You can experience beautiful galleries, hassle-free downloads and integrate is sales. I use CloudSpot myself. Uh, it's really the only way that I send photos to clients at this point. Uh, makes my life easier, keeps the client happy, saves me some time. And as you guys know, time is money. And speaking of money, if you click the link down below, you can get 50% off of CloudSpot for the first year. So go check out that link. I think that you'll be glad that you did. All right, so now we can talk about uh, photography and how to take some more exciting photos. Uh, And I'll I'll remind you guys as well, this is one of those um, episodes where I'm going to be sharing some of my photography. I'm going to have some examples of how I've improved my photography, some photos that I think illustrate uh, some of these points here. So if you guys want the full experience uh, for the podcast, I mean, I'll I'll explain everything pretty well with audio. Uh, But if you do want to watch one on YouTube, this would be a good one to watch on YouTube. Just search uh, Photography Friends or Jared Poirier should be able to find that pretty easily. Okay, first up is long exposure, and this is a really good way to uh, make your photos more dynamic, more interesting, really add some energy to your photos. Uh, You can capture movement like this, you can get light trails, uh, you end up with really bright light in your photos as well. Um, The way to achieve this, you know, uh, you got to get out of that automatic mode, you got to start using that manual mode, really take control of the way that your camera is capturing light. uh, And you're going to want to keep that shutter open for a long time, I'd say, uh, in order to get some like light trails and stuff, probably one second or more uh, of exposure, Uh, you're going to get really bright lights that way. So make sure that you adjust, you know, make sure that you compensate with those other settings, whether that is uh, ISO or aperture. Um, But yeah, you can get some really cool effects like this. It's something that I've been using in my photography quite a bit. Uh, I really enjoy getting the light trails thing going. Basically, you just leave that shutter open for a while pan over. You can do this handheld, uh, but I've been finding that it works really, really well if you have a tripod. You can get some really straight uh, light trails and things like that. If your subject's moving like cars or whatever, then you don't have to move the camera. Obviously, you'll get light trails because they're moving. Uh, Yeah, but just a really interesting way to add some energy to your photos, and I recommend it. All right, uh, next up, I would say uh, another really good way to start mixing it up and start getting more interesting photos is to use a flash. 
Uh, it's definitely a way to get brighter photos, um, definitely a way to get some interesting uh, dynamic effects with light. Uh, you know, you can play around with the angle of the light, you can play around with bouncing light off uh, the ceiling, bouncing light off walls. Uh, you know, you can use different types of um, filters and stuff like that for uh, your flash. You will probably have to adjust the white balance. That's something that you'll have to get used to. If you're gonna be shooting with a flash, a lot of flashes are like pretty white light. Uh, of course, you can kind of use like gels and, um, and filters and things like that to change that, but you can also change that right there in your camera. And yeah, another thing that I really love about uh, shooting with a flash is it allows you to shoot in locations that you couldn't otherwise get good images, right? They, they'd just be too grainy, you know, in places that are like really dark and, uh, and things like that. You can still get good photos of those areas. If you have a flash, uh, you might even be very surprised how cool the photos come out. So yeah, definitely recommend picking up a flash. They're not very expensive. You can probably get one for like 30 bucks. You could probably trade like two or three beers for a flash. At least that's what I did. Okay, so another way to get some really badass effects in your photos is to use a wide aperture. Again, you'll probably have to uh, get into that manual mode, start playing around. Um, but yeah, if you have that wide aperture, number one, you're going to get a lot of light in your photos. Uh, and you're also going to be getting that nice shallow depth of field look, right? It's kind of uh, one of the things that separates like real uh, photography from like cell phone photography, right? Sorry to all the uh, like smartphone, whatever photographers out there. Uh, but that ability to get the like real shallow depth of field where the subject is like perfectly in focus and the background is blurred out. Uh, that's, a, that's a wide aperture trick right there. Um, and sometimes I find that, you know, even if the photo is very sharply in focus, but like it's uniformly in focus, it's, it's a lot less impressive in a way uh, when you have something to compare to. Like for me, the photo kind of seems sharper sometimes when you look at the subject and the, you know, the background is blurred out. So the subject seems like really, really sharp. It's a, a really nice effect. Uh, of course, this will allow you to get bokeh if you can find some nice lights, uh, like I find, you know, Christmas lights and stuff like that. Just to give you one example, look really, really cool with shallow depth of field. You can get like all of these little beautiful uh, areas of light, these little balls of light behind the subject can be a very, uh, very dynamic, very beautiful effect in your photos. And of course, uh, if you do shoot in a place that has, you know, a lot of layers to the background, I'm picturing like maybe like a university campus or some type of like cool corridor um, where you can see all the way back, you know, and have the subject there. And if you're blurring out that background, like it's just yeah, it just adds like quite a few layers to the photo and uh, just something a little bit more interesting to look at than kind of a flat image. All right, uh, up next we have something <clears throat> that a lot of photographers face. I think uh, especially a lot of new photographers uh, suffer from this, which is always relying on that center composition, right? You're instinct immediately is to just put that subject in the middle of the frame, shoot that photo. And the truth is that that can lead to some pretty boring photos uh, after a while, if that's kind of all you're doing. And I, I realize the irony of saying this while I'm like perfectly center frames <laughs> in this video. Uh, but anyways, um, I'm, I'm a little bit lazier with my YouTube videos than my photography, I suppose. But uh, yeah, I would recommend experimenting with composition. Uh, you have that rule of thirds grid. One of the first things uh, that my one of my photography mentors, Alexi, told me when I first started getting into photography, when I first got that T5i, he said, you put that grid on, sir. You put that rule of thirds grid, you know, and then you can go ahead and start playing around with composition, you know, trying putting your subject on the left or the right, uh, even like leaving more negative space, right, uh, in your photos. It's a way to 
um, build meaning in your photos. Like you have to realize the relationship between like the composition of your photos and the meaning that people are going to take from your photos. Uh, the show Mr. Robot is a very good example of, uh, of using composition to create meaning uh, in images. And uh, yeah, it's just something that uh, every, every good photographer needs to learn after a while is try to avoid always relying on that center composition. And another very common crutch of many photographers out there, even friends of mine who, you know, casually take photos, they'll send me some photos and the photos will be pretty good, but, uh, but they'll all be at eye level. And I think that's something that, you know, if you want to get a little bit better at photography, if you want to, you know, have some more pro images and just images that are a little bit more intriguing, a little bit more interesting to look at, uh, you have to abandon that eye level thing, right? Um, it's kind of the most surefire way to make an uninteresting photo uh, because eye level is how you see the world every single day, right? Um, so if you're able to move that camera either higher, you know, uh, I've even used like a monopod or a tripod, a gimbal, whatever, in order to uh, raise that up and capture uh, images from like a higher altitude. Uh, also getting really low can be very interesting. In fact, sometimes when I'm doing like concert photography and stuff like that, I'll put the camera as low as I can possibly get it, like get it right on ground level, looking up. Just a way to make your photos stand out from the everyday thing and kind of trigger something in the viewer's mind where they're like, oh wow, I, I don't see the world like this uh, every single day. So it's kind of more interesting. And yeah, like uh, another tip that I had here as well when it comes to shooting like higher, um, don't be afraid to like get on top of stuff if you're, you know, athletic enough to do that. I don't want anyone risking their lives here. Uh, but when I'm shooting concert photography, I'm never afraid to get on top of those speakers, get on top of those amps, uh, create some more, um, you know, just verticality or whatever you want to call it to the to the images. Just Just makes them... Yeah, more energetic, more more exciting to look at. And uh, another tip here is if you do have that swivelly screen, right, that can really help you to still frame up those shots. You can swivel your screen down, hold your camera above your head, and you'll still be able to uh, frame things up and, and see how it's looking. I mean, that only really helps if you're the type of person that likes to shoot which the, with the screen on the back of your camera. Uh, if you are like a purist who only shoots with the viewfinder, uh, I don't know, you might have a hard time doing stuff like that unless you're like really tall. Okay, photo sets is the next thing I wanna talk about here. This is something I've been experimenting uh, with quite a bit. Um, saw some stuff on Instagram that inspired me to start playing around with this idea of like photo sets, right? Um, putting multiple images together into one image. This works really well as like an Instagram story with three images stacked on top of each other. Uh, it's really cool thing to start playing around with. You're able to tell a story uh, by, you know, these changing images or like the, you know, three or more images presented together. Play around with this, uh, see what works for you guys. But I do find that this is a very um, interesting next step from just shooting those, uh, you know, static images, one image at a time. Uh, really, you can start to tell more of a story, more of a narrative uh, when you present your images uh, in sets. And yeah, something that's uh, definitely definitely reinvigorated my love for photography and I would recommend that you guys try it out play around with that a uh, little bit you might come up with something amazing okay I also want to talk about location scouting here so this is another great way to uh, to get some more exciting photos is to look into some other locations than the normal ones that you shoot in all the time so if you want to branch out your locations uh, you can obviously look up, you can just go on the internet and look up like great places to shoot uh, photos in Toronto, for instance. You'll probably get quite a few uh, spots that have been overly done, though, I think, if you take that approach. What I like to do is scout out my own locations 
And what, uh, what I'll usually do in order to achieve that, just when I'm walking around in my day-to-day -day life, or sometimes I will actually go out with the idea of like finding good locations for photos. And uh, I just take pictures of the area on my phone. Uh, my phone automatically geotags those images, so then I can just go back and uh, and check check out uh, some. You know, if I'm booking a shoot, I can just go through my phone, check out some of those locations, and then kind of make a little uh, little treasure map <laughs> to get me around to the different locations for the shoot. You know. Okay, so uh, another thing that I want to mention here is the category of action, right? Um, getting more action in your photos is a really great way to, to avoid taking boring photos. Um, here I'm going to uh, advise the opposite of what I said earlier. You know, sometimes you want to have that long exposure uh, to get those light trails and stuff like that, but it can also be really cool just to freeze action in your photos, right? Um, this can work really well when you're doing like sport photography uh, and, you know, even with music photography, like concert photography and stuff, if someone is like really rocking out and really head banging, really like jumping up and down, dancing, uh, you, you're going to need that quick shutter to freeze that motion, capture uh, that action. It's something that I screwed up a little bit when I first started out in photography. Something that takes a little bit of practice is just getting that shutter speed exactly right. But if you're able to pull it off, you can create some really cool uh, images. Yeah. Uh, another way to get uh, a little bit more movement in your images is to not surprisingly, we talked about this on this show quite a bit, make the the model, the subject, whatever you want to call them, you got to make them laugh, you got to make them have a good time, you know, I'll tell some stupid jokes, sometimes you can like pretend you're about to take the photo, and then not, and then they'll laugh a little bit, and then you take it real quick, uh, that's another trick that kind of works, really anything to get them out of their shell a little bit, get them moving around a little bit, and then, uh, yeah, make sure that you're not missing that moment, um, what, you know, if you're super pro and you're not worried about, uh, you know, your your ability to capture that exact moment, then then just shoot the way that you normally shoot. If you're a little bit worried about the security, um, using burst mode is a, is a great way to make sure that you don't miss the moment. You know, once you have the subject moving, uh, if you just throw on that burst mode, yeah, you're going to get like a whole bunch of photos to go through, uh, but your chances of missing anything cool, missing any moments definitely goes down uh, in that case. And, you know, another really cool way to, to get more action in your photos is just to get closer to the subject sometimes, uh, you know, especially if you're using like a wide angle lens, getting in real close can create some really cool, uh, really cool action and really dynamic images. So yeah, I recommend uh, all of that. Uh, and next up, we got a few more categories here. Um, yeah, these have all been kind of like, for the most part, related to actually shooting the photos. I do want to talk a little bit about editing the photos, uh, but we'll we'll get into that, I guess, uh, for, for our last tip here. Uh, but before we get into our last tip, I have the second last tip, uh, which is don't be shy. I don't think that shyness is uh, is necessarily the best quality for a good photographer. I think that you have to, yeah, for the sake for the sake of your art. I think that you do if you are a naturally shy person, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, everybody is uh, everybody is a little bit different. But I definitely find that if you can be a little bit more outgoing, a little bit more social, then that definitely helps uh, helps with your photography. Helps to improve the quality of your images. Uh, I would say be entertaining. Um, yeah, it's really, I think that part of being a good photographer can sometimes get overlooked. Like, of course you wanna be technically correct. Uh, you wanna have all your settings right. You wanna have your lights in the right place. Um, but yeah, none of that's gonna matter if uh, if the person in your in your photo, like if the subject of your photo, looks pissed off or, or isn't having fun, right? Like for me, I, I'd honestly prefer, uh, you know, that I have someone who's engaged, someone who's enjoying the photo shoot. I think that what's gonna come through from that, um, you know, arguably more important than like getting every technical detail 
perfectly right. So yeah, don't be shy. Don't be afraid to shoot photos of strangers, especially if you're at an event and stuff like that. Most of the time, if you're at an event, people there realize that they will uh, be photographed. It's pretty normal. Again, you, you should ask them, uh, can I take a photo of you or can I take a photo of your dog is a question that I end up asking quite a bit. Uh, yeah. And another important thing and something that, you know, I've really been learning lately just through trial and error, shooting a lot of photos. Don't be afraid to ask your subject, your model for ideas. You know, you're kind of trapped in your own perspective and your specific way of looking at things. And if you ask the other person who you're shooting with, hey, do you have any ideas? Like, how do you want to be shot? Do you, or, um, you know, what do you see any cool locations around here? Any cool angles? we could get, uh, chances are that they'll probably have some, some cool ideas and, uh, and two heads are better than one in, in most scenarios. Okay. And as promised, we're going to get into some editing tips here. Uh, and my tip for editing to avoid taking boring photos, try strong editing, right? Um, and what I mean by this, you know, this is a phrase that I'm basically taking from Lightroom, which is uh, my personal photography editing uh, software of choice. You know, in Lightroom, you have your presets, you have subtle presets, and you have strong presets. And I think sometimes it's uh, it's good to embrace those strong presets, right? It's good to take an image and really change it quite a bit when it comes to the levels, you know, the contrast, even uh, even the colors, even specific colors that you want to pull out, whether you're going for like that orange or teal look or like a desaturated look, even black and white, you know, I've really been experimenting a lot with black and white. You can get some very, very cool images just playing around with uh, that like uh, black and white or like a monochrome kind of style. Uh, one thing that is really important if you do want to get into, you know, strong editing really changing your photos a lot uh, in post, you are going to want to shoot raw. Uh, another thing when I started out shooting that uh, people who knew a bit more than me were like, hey man, you gotta start shooting raw. I can't be, you can't be shooting those JPEGs anymore. You know, it's not, it's not amateur hour anymore. <laughs> you need to start shooting raw. Uh, what shooting raw does is it basically saves a lot more data uh, of what was captured by the sensor. And it uh, it gives you a lot more flexibility when it comes to editing your images, right? So if you shoot raw, uh, you'll be able to keep a lot of that dynamic range. You'll be able to keep those shadows, those highlights. You'll be able to select colors, pull them out, and really achieve the look that you want. I find that uh, a lot of the time, the true image that I'm actually... Uh, wanting to use like the true image that I end up loving uh, is way different than what was captured in camera a lot of the time, right? I think that some of the true magic of photography is that editing, you know, is uh, is opening up Lightroom and and playing around and, and getting the vibe just right in your photos. So definitely definitely recommend that you guys uh, first of all get Lightroom <laughs> or some type of like really good photo editing software, uh, shoot raw, and then just, just play around uh, with really changing your images quite a bit in post. And I think that you'll end up with some very interesting results. All right, so that is going to be about it for this podcast. Um, gone, been going on a bit of a spree here of solo uh, episodes that are around a half an hour long. I hope that you guys appreciate these episodes. I hope that you're getting something out of them. Hope that you're having a fun time. Again, um, I'll be putting up uh, some examples of, uh, of my photography, kind of illustrate some of these points. I'll put those up on uh, Instagram, <laughs> uh, photo underscore friends underscore pod. I'll put those up uh, on this video on uh, my YouTube channel, Jared Poirier YouTube channel. Uh, we have a Patreon that you guys can check out. And we also have a beautiful sponsor, which is, of course, CloudSpot. Make sure you guys click that link, get that deal. And before we get out of here, of course, we need a something random, uh, which will be if you're out in the woods and you 
see a grizzly bear. Give him a dollar if you care.